guests are our hosts, Dr. Lark. Groucho's guests tonight are Julian Ross, Buddy Greco, Henry Gibson, Dr. Bergen Evans, Barbara Streisand, Adele Kenyon, Patty Joy Harmon, Skip Henderson with the NBC Orchestra, and yours truly, George Stradivan. And now, here's the star of our show, Groucho Marx. very well. About half the audience left the theater. So, I'm going to tell you another one tonight, and I'm curious to know how many know this story. So when, when I'm through telling it, I'm going to ask you to raise your hands, those who know this story. This is about a little boy, about 12 years old, and it's a winter's night, and he's standing on the corner, it's around 6 o'clock, and he has 30 newspapers, and he's sold two. And he's very despondent, and suddenly, eight of these papers fall in the slush and the snow. And as he goes to pick him up, he's cursing. And the minister walks along just at that moment. And he's shocked by this language. And he wants to admonish the boy, but he doesn't want to walk right up to him and censor him for this. So he decides on a device. He walks up to the boy and he says, uh, Little boy, can you tell me where the post office is? And the kid says, Well, get down two blocks and turn a block to your left and then across the street and you run right in. He says, Thank you. He says, By the way, uh, when you got those papers, I listened to that language, that blasphemous language that you were using. I'm surprised that you, little boy your age, using that kind of language. Listen, I'll tell you what you do. You come to my church next Sunday, and I'll show you the road to heaven. And the kid says, I hell you will. You didn't even know where the post office was. I'm sure most of you went to camp or have been places where they sing these kind of songs. So would you give me an approximate key? And... That's no, I don't get anything from that. <laughs> we bring the piano over, huh? <laughs> now give me it again. Oh, of course you all know this. Row, row, row your boat gently down. Now wait, no, wait a minute. Let me sing it for you. Fabulous salary. <laughs> you sing the second chorus, and I want to hear a harmony, too. I don't want your straight lead singing. Because any, any kid can do that. Ready? Row, row, row your boat. What's the next line? <laughs> Gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is just a dream. Is that right? Well, that's an approximation of the word. Now, now, I'd like you all to say it, but I want harmony. You know, alto and tenor. No, it's not you, it's them. If you just confine yourself to the job there at him, I think you'll find that's even too much for it. Pretty early in the week to start insulting him. As a rule, the average MC on this show doesn't insult skits until around Thursday. <laughs> now then, are you all ready? I'll go. Roll, roll, roll. I was going to say, you see, I was only eight in Animal Crackers, and you were about 18. 
all is going to the Elks or the Friars or the Eagles or Rotary Club or something. Would you, uh, don't you like men? I mean, don't you prefer them to women? Why not? For the record proves that. Your record, or you mean? <laughs> Would you, uh, we know you have to get back to the theater. No, I wanted to say, I, I know you have a little man that's coming on later who does poetry, and I feel so bad because I had a poem that I wrote, you know, that's my second uh, love, uh, doing little dog roll. And I thought of an Emily Dickinson type? Well, I don't know what you saw me. Have you I'm ever read any that. Emily Dickinson? Uh, hmm? Have you ever read it? No, any? I haven't. No. You've read Dorothy Parker. Yes, I have. Men never and make passes at girls that yeah. wear glasses. That's yeah. her, one of her famous poems.
He was a rock. Very, 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 very extraordinary thing what he does. I mean, you know, he's at Portsmouth, Ohio, or something, and he might be from uh, 18 miles from there. It's wonderful. But uh, you have all the steering, the um, the, the dialects. Yeah, the, move, the movement of people in the world uh, is destroying dialects almost everywhere, yeah. or they're, they're becoming great standard languages. When I was a boy, I spoke the Derbyshire dialect in northern England. Uh, and when I went back in 1953 with my wife, I wondered if here the dialect I used to speak. Uh, I think she thought she was like a change in pronunciation. And uh, her husband. Yeah. <laughs> and I found myself in 1953. The BBC had done such a job that I found myself an object of curiosity in this little village in Derbyshire because I had spoken the dialect of John. That's a sign you're getting old. And and they didn't speak it then. No. Well, what did they speak? English standard uh, imitation Oxford uh, BBC English. Well, do you think that's uh, because of television? That is reducing everything to a common denominator? Television, radio, the movies, and then the enormous movement of people during the wars and so on. Uh, these regional things are disappearing. It's too bad because they're often very vital and very real. America still has some differences. That is, there's, there's the great one. Dialects? Well, is yeah. there any difference between dialects and accents? Well, a dialect is simply a very marked regional accent. And America has, you can distinguish speech of New England and speech of the South, of Gibson, and uh, speech like uh, the, the vague New York area, like yours, and speech of the Middle West, like mine. Can you recognize a New York accent on mine? Uh, uh, I, can hear, sir, yes, I can hear a certain sound Second, in your voice. Second, uh, I'm grammatical right there. No, I'm, no, 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 you're getting too much on the defensive. Why is it that everyone who speaks... Let's say if he has a southern accent, he's in no way ashamed of it. He's rather ashamed of you for being with him because you don't speak with a southern accent. If you have a, if you have a New England accent, uh, he certainly regards you as an inferior creature because you don't have it. Everybody with a New York accent gets on the defensive at once. And yet it's, it's an old English accent. Well, are there accents, let's say the, uh, let's say the South, do you regard that as a more seductive uh, accent than, uh, let's say, New England? Ladies keep it for some reason, much more than men who come north, and, and I must confess that uh, I find it rather attractive because it, it, any strangeness is slightly aphrodisiac. It's, it's otherwise attractive. <laughs> I hope there's nobody out there who knows what an aphrodisiac is. <laughs> yes, yes, well, the, women, the women keep it to be charming, I'm sure. Uh, and and I, they I, succeed as far as I'm concerned. And you're charmed by that? Yes. So I, what I would you try. find the, uh, the most unsexy accent or dialect in America? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I, I think I'd find the, the Southern more charming than the New England. And the New England is the less... Trust I associate that literature, you know, with... with Garma the Wind? Pretty much spinster. Do you think that New England is... Uh, there's nobody up there that's spinster? That's what I sort of gather from literature, yes. <laughs> that kind of old literature, or Emily yeah, Dickinson yeah. kind of stuff, yeah, on and Brontes and all this. All oh, my books are old, too, yeah. right? Yeah. The books I read are very old. Yeah. Have you ever tried a new book? I'm going to read Mr. Gibson's new book first. Oh, perhaps. Anyway. I'd like that, too. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to have a word from uh, your local sponsor, and then we'll be back for some airy edition. Uh, Bregan, uh, I'd like to talk to you again about uh, accents. Uh, let's say, for example, that you were traveling through New England, New Hampshire, or Vermont, and you met a very pretty girl who was, let's say, from Maine. Well, that's farthest north. Very nice in New England, isn't it? Yes. Now, would you be re repulsed by her because she spoke with? Oh her? no, no, no. We were just speaking Wang. Oh goodness, no. If she was attractive, but I, we were just saying whether it adds an extra charm. Uh, well, let's say the southern girl had this lovely voice and seductive quality, but wasn't quite as pretty as the girl in Maine. How would you feel then about it? Well, there's a compensation. <laughs> very educational, but at least I find it very interesting. Compensation in nature. As you get older, your eyes get weaker, and you can't make these distinctions anymore. Anyway. In other words, you would reject uh, the prettiest girl in New England because of her accent. I've never rejected a girl. I would just, well, you know, make take her name and address and <laughs> wait. And not the phone number. Now they don't have. Phone what kind of a flight are you? That's huh? a <laughs> <laughs> word that's kind of gone out of the language, isn't it? Yeah, it would date flight. you. Yes, it would date you to say she's a flirt. Yeah. Well, almost everything dates me. I mean, I can't <laughs> change everything. But you were talking uh, when I spoke to you yesterday when we had lunch. You were talking about the different various dialects of Greater New York and uh, yes, the, New York, the boroughs. 
me. Uh, the, the, the speech that you hear in New York, that, that, that in, in joking way, people say, they say, toy sweet and toy old pearl, which, is, which isn't what they're saying, really, if you listen closely. Do you think it's that uh, exaggerated? No, no, I'm, I'm, today. no I'm exaggerating it grossly, but you... You heard the same sound, you may remember, in, in remember the movie Baby Doll, which was, which was photographed. Do I? I could never forget it. Well, this was photographed right down on the Delta. And do you remember this girl's concern about her pointature? That is, you heard exactly that same sound. This sound isn't, isn't confined to New York at all. It's, it's believed to be probably one of the English dialects that settled here. Many of the American regional differences of speech are based on English dialects which are brought over here by different groups of settlers. The, uh, in New York, in the New York area, thing that I hear that interests me very much is, in, in the New York area... You've forgotten about the girl in Maine, huh? No, I'm dreaming of her, but I'm getting on with a linguistic. Uh, New York, a great many people in New York are, by our standards in the Middle West, are reversing the words bring and take. That is, even, even an educated person in New York may say, I won't be in tomorrow, I've got to bring my boy down to Princeton. Now, uh... Well, he may, he may not like Princeton. That's <laughs> a very poor football team there, generally. But you, I heard this in Chicago about three days ago for the first time in my life, so it's moving west. This and, and all over America, uh, any more is changing from a negative to a positive. That is, my generation only said, like, uh, such as, I will not shop there anymore. But I'm hearing more and more, that's a wonderful new AMP. I'm going to shop there anymore. Well, that's, and, that's ridiculous. No, no, I've been in the A and B, and I've been in the <laughs> I've been in the Safeway and uh, all the na national chains. Have you ever heard anybody say that, George? Yes, I have. Oh, you're yeah. a donkey. <laughs> you told me you made it in English. Yes, I did. So and where is this? In Tampa? No, San Francisco State College. San Francisco State. And you've heard that in San Francisco? Well, in Los Angeles. I thought, though, that people were sort of kidding with that. I, no, you think they mean no. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the show we have, The Last Word, where people send in questions, we got questions about this from almost every state in the union, so that it is funny. But the fact you got questions shows that the person that wrote the letter, it was strange to the person who wrote the letter. People never write in about things except those that are strange to them. But nonetheless, it did show it was spreading, and that to the sort of people who write letters, uh, it is strange. But it isn't strange to the people that say it. It, it strikes me as strange. I, I, Generation. You think eventually we will have just uh, one dialect for all of the United States, one accent, or I'm afraid vernacular? I'm afraid so. You, and you don't like that? Do you? No, no. I, 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 well, you, Give yeah. us a little Welsh talk. I don't think there's anybody out front. There may be some Welshers out front, but I don't think there's <laughs> anybody that understands I Welsh. And it's kind of cool. The kind you did. Oh, when I was when you were in Derbyshire, yeah. when you were a lad. I remember a big lad over there. Yeah. Uh, we used to, we used to, I remember a song we sang, their, their, their 5th of November, something like our 4th of July, and they burn Guy Fawkes. And the night before, we'd go out and, and we'd be begging for pennies, really. We used to sing, uh, well, you were, you were pretty poor, huh? Well, I didn't, my singing wasn't worth much more than what we got, which left us poor. But, uh, we'd go out and sing, I won't attempt to sing it. Oh, go on, sing it. Oh, no, I didn't sing it. No reason you should. Achy, <laughs> cakey, cake, my mother's forgot to bake me. Father's putting currants in to keep toad last the gate. I remember that much. Obviously, a uh, coffee cake of some kind, huh? Uh, a bun? A bun or something, but we, we put the definitely the D sound in mother, and then uh, to keep toad laugh, to keep the old laugh against the going. Uh, why father was putting the currents in? I never knew much about cooking. Could you hold it for a minute? I have to sell something. I think that's what they usually say. Uh, Mr. Evans, maybe some people are just tuning in. I want to ask you something. Uh, you wrote your thesis. Um, Dr. Jones, yes, I guess that's how I got in the dictionary, since he wrote one. I'm talking about that. Well, I, I think you're doing right. That's a monumental job. Tell us about the, the accents, the, the Welsh and the Scotch, and what was it Johnson or Boswell Johnson. said about them? Johnson had a, uh, had a, a strong Staffordshire accent. Boswell, of course, spoke with a Scotch accent. He was Scotch, but he hired a tutor to try to break it. He didn't like the Scotch. It was considered disgraceful to speak Scotch. But Johnson made fun of the Scotch because he claimed Scotch always praised each other in a disregard sometimes of strict accuracy, and it's annoyed him. Uh, Boswell once said to him, well, you can't say that of the Irish, can you? And Johnson said, no, the Irish are a fair people. They never praise each other. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Oh, did Johnson say also about the, the British useful, what the British feed the horses, what the, he defined oats. What the Scots use for uh, breakfast? He defined oats as a cereal fed in, in England, the horses, and in Scotland, the men, and 
some Scotsman and said, where will you find such horses and such men? Thank you.